can turn with me in the book of Genesis, in the book of beginning, chapter 1, verses 3. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Verses 6. Then God said, let there be a foreman in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Verses 9. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 11. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herbs that yield seed, and the fruit tree that yield fruit, according, according to its kind whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. Verses 14. Then God said. Verses 20. Then God said. Verses 24. Then God said. And it was so. God said, and it was so. God said, and it was so. You know why it was so? Because he is God alone. And he does not do anything to please man. He do things to please himself. And God said, and God said, and it was so mouth it God mouth it and it was so and it was so God mouth it and it was so Verses 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Then God said, Let us make man in our image and our likeness. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Dominion speaks of place, of authority. This is my domain, and I rule and I reign in this domain. I have to defend my domain. I have to protect my domain, and all that is within, I must protect. You cannot go in the lion's territory and have dominion you're looking for trouble if you do not feel within yourself that you can defeat the lion do not go in the lion's territory because that is his domain and the lion will say Rrr! and it will be so Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that incle include disembodied spirits. That includes disembodied spirit. Any spirit without a body is illegal. That's the reason why God sent his son so that he can operate legally upon the face of the earth. Because God is a spirit and he will not take on the form of man unless he has a representative upon the face of the earth. Oh 
Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written. And he said, The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Yeah, did I say, did I mention about a lion before? When Joshua, when, when Israel sent his son before him, when he reached to Judah, he said, Lion. <clears throat> dominion. This is my domain. I must rule and reign. And when you are a king, this is what I was saying back then, back in the days of old, when you are a king, you must rule. Do not let anyone rule for you. When you're a king, you must rule. When you are a king, you must rule. So God created man in his own image. In the, in the image of God, he created him. Male, male man, and female man spirit does not have gender because of the earth male and female but I say man woe man is spirit we are all humorous man male man and female man we are all humorous man God created them not male man and male man <laughs> Over to uh, chapter 2, verses 7. And the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living being. And man became a living being. I'm coming to home stretch avenue just now. Hebrews three three one. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. The tradition has said profession. It is interpreted the equivalent for profession is confession. We are called into a great confession. Amen. We look at 4.14. Seeing then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Let us hold fast our confession. 10.3. Hebrews 10.23. Let us hold fast our confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Amen? Okay. Romans 10, 8 to 10. 8 to 10. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. With, with the heart, one believes to righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. 
Salvation means preservation. Confession is made unto preservation. Amen. Mark 11, 23 and 24. For surely I say to you, whosoever shall, shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Luke 17, 66. Luke 17, 6. So the Lord said, if you are faith as a, as, a, as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be, be pulled up by the roots and be plant, planted in the, in the sea, and it, will, and it will obey you. Matthew 17, 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Tonight, brethren, the word of God declares that God said, and it was so. God has established a principle for you and I to live successfully. And as long as you and I follow the word of God, we will be successful. God does not honor our faith, but he honors our faith based upon his word. God does not honor our faith, but he honors our faith based upon his word. Because the word of God is forever settled in heaven. God said, have I exalted my word above my name. And in the olden days, in order for a king to go back upon his word, it was a dishonor for a king to go back on, upon his word. And God said, and it was so. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he came to man. He said, let us create man in our own likeness. And in our image. Tonight I submit to you, brethren, that you and I can operate on the same level of faith God operates on. Because if you get the crumbs, you get all the ingredients that is in, that is in the bread. So if God is a spirit... You are a spirit. I am a spirit. I live in a body. I have a soul. Mm. Jesus. Spirit do not die. Oh my God. When God said, let there be. And if man say, let there be, it will be so. Because he is a chip from the original. Whatsoever we say, we shall have if we doubt not. But we need to understand who we are. We need to understand the principles that God has laid down for us to follow to be successful. And we can always be accurate at all times if we follow the word. Jesus Christ when he was taken up to be tempted of the devil, the devil came to him and he said, it is written. The devil went away, he came again. Jesus Christ said, it is 
written. He came back the third time. It is written. Which king in this entire earth will put his authority in writing? A king must always voice his authority. When a bully come up against you, you must never stand there with your mouth closed. From the time you open and say, come, you drive fair in the bully and you will stop in his truck. So who got the authority? You speak the word. The Bible declares that every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you must rise up and condemn it. Because we have power in our mouth. Mouth it. That's the reason why we have to mount it. Because mounting it bring down mountains. I have never seen a big axe cut down a big tree yet. The word, although it is small, it is very powerful. It has dynamite power within it. As long as you and I can stand upon the word of God and declare what God will say, we will forever stand and be victorious. Because God said so and it will be so. Some children are known because they look like their father. And some children are known because the way their father speaks, that's the way they speak. And God said, and it was so. And if men say, it will be so. Samson had to open his mouth. He said, Father, let me avenge my enemies. He opened his mouth and he spoke the words and it was so. Sticks and bones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. That's a lie. I remember in the early 80s when Gaddafi of Libya and Ronald Reagan was getting it out. Gaddafi told Reagan, you're playing with fire. And Reagan sent fire to him and he shut his mouth until he died. Russia was playing bad. And Regan said, Star War. He knew exactly what Regan was saying. And he was calmed down. I remember this guy yet wanted to fight me. I heard he wanted to fight me. This is outside of my village. Being the person I was, I lace up, I tie up my 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 my, my yachting boots or whatever I had on there, my sneaker, you call it today. <laughs> and I approach him. I said, I heard you want to fight me, but when you're ready, he back down. There was another fellow. He had wanted to fight me. I didn't want to fight. But my brother above me who loved to fight. They had a party. He said, come in front of the guy. He said, fight! And he ran and he got home. He ran home to pick up his piece of weapon to come back. He said, he's going home. And if he had reached back there, and anybody else, while I was fighting, 
was trying to part or whatever, there would have been damage. But the fact remained, he opened his mouth and he said something. But a fight never took place. Because when I made up my mind to fight, the guy backed down and he started crying. We must mouth it. Brethren, let me give you the last scriptures then. And you're going to feel happy because you go home early tonight. Proverbs 18. No, let me go to 18.20. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. What does that mean? A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. We have a fruit in our mouth. Oh, yeah. And from the produce, <laughs> and from the produce of his lips. He shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Is so much power we have. Because God said and it was so. And because we are the image of God. We must say and it will be so. Because we have something in our mouth. That give us life or death. James said this little member. The smallest of all. It can set this entire world on fire. But it's same little world in our mouth we can bless God and kill man oh if you don't believe it go back home and read it for yourself just do not take the scriptures lightly just study it. Read it for yourself. Matthew 12, 27. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. As Kenneth Hagin said, he said, words form in the heart, release out of the mouth is powerful. It goes into all the world to accomplish what you send it to accomplish. And it will bring it back to you, whether good or bad, whether you like it or not. It's coming back to you. You send it out and it's come back to you. That's why it is good not to speak negative about anyone else. Because it's going to come right back to you. Payday will come. Whether you like it or not, it is so. Because the word of God declare it. Because the word of God is forever settled. God himself cannot change it. He cannot change it. He cannot and will not. It's impossible, highly impossible for God to change it. Proverbs 6, 2. You are snared by the words of your mouth. 
we are taken captive by the words of our mouth. Your mouth can put you in prison. Your mouth can put you in a grave. A lot of men die because of their mouth. So let us use our tongue. Let us mouth it. Because God has established it. I could not have understand while Creflo Dollar said to me, and I became his partner. He said, do not say anything bad against me, my family, nor the ministry. But I understood that principle later on. The word of God in one of the book, I think in, in Chronicles, it never meant, it did not mention anything about the bad deeds of the kings. In Jude, it said that when Satan was contending for the body of Christ, of uh, Moses, he did not bring a railing accusation against the devil. But he said, the Lord rebuke you. It is very important, it is of the utmost importance for us to speak good, whether we like it or not. If you don't want to say good to somebody, say nothing. Because words are powerful and they are very weighty. We have victory. But we must pattern ourselves. We must practice or we must imitate the word of God. And when you and I imitate the word of God, we are going to get results. As Paul said, for me to live is Christ. You recognize that he cannot live this life by himself and be successful. Or to be an overcomer. We must stand in our position where he places us. The music minister must never left his position to set right the intercessory department. That's out of place. He must not say anything negative about another's ministry. So often, we take upon ourselves to be judge, jury, and executioner. And one of the fastest things to go for us is our mouth. Sometimes we don't get the message properly, but we just run. Like those two messengers. One was a very good messenger, but it was not his time to run, but he had wanted to run. So I said, okay, you want to run, go ahead, run. He didn't run with a message, but he was a good runner. When David heard that, well, this man has come, he said, hey, he's a good runner. He came. <laughs> What's the message? No, no message. We must be careful. We must be careful. In the art of combat, hand to hand combat, it doesn't matter how skinny I am. You can be big like an orc, and I can beat you. Because I can use your strength to beat you. And the enemy will always try to use our strength to beat us. That's the word. 
when he presented himself to, to Eve, he twist the word. He used the word to his advantage. The devil believed the word. He believed every word that came out of God's mouth because he knew it is sure. He knew what God said it will be. That's the reason why God, when God said to him in the garden of Eden, he said a seed of the woman shall crush, literally mean crush, not bruise, not brush, but crush. He knew exactly what came out of God's word. It was so. That's the reason why he was trying to stop the seed from coming. If one feeble Jew remain upon this face of the earth, Jesus Christ will come back. And the enemy will always seek to destroy the seed, the word of God. Because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And if we don't take the word of God and place it in our spirit, we cannot speak what is rightfully ours. We must speak into being. God has given us the seed of his word. God has given us the seed of his word. And we should never attempt to use our tongue to say, I don't like this and I don't like that. God is God all by himself. When God is building, we must never pull down. We must say what God says. And it's very important for us to say what God says. If we are all one fellas in a ship, we must sing the same songs. We must speak the same word. Oh, the late Miles Monroe said in his book, he talked about the kingdom. He said when man sinned, the Holy Spirit who was there as the governor Man took his independence, so the king recalled back the governor into the kingdom. Did you get that? When man sin, when man deliberately choose his own independence, he rejected God's rule. And God recalled the Holy Spirit who he sent to colonize man. So man had to be dressing with animal clothing. And today, brethren, we are being clothed with a different clothing. We must dress like the king. We must walk like the king. We must talk like the king. It is a great honor and privilege to be subjects of the kingdom of God. His kingdom is to be established in us. And in order for the kingdom of God to be established in us, we must mouth it. We must mouth the word of God. Words are powerful. I have a nephew in prison. As a little boy growing up, he always threatened to kill somebody. And he ended up killing somebody. Not because he had wanted to kill somebody. It's because he mouthed it. So many lives has been shaped and formed because of parents' words. I don't know what this one is going to come like. Look how she walking. This one looks like a lazy man. And when he turned a lazy man, you wanted to know how this boy become a lazy man because you mounted. We must be careful. We must be careful. Tonight, you are not guilty, you are not innocent. 
of the word of God. By our mouth we must establish the kingdom principles because God has set it in motion and we must carry it on. What you said about your country. Many times I get angry and many times I said I can go and take over this country. But in order for me to do that, blood will have to shed. But knowing tonight that we are created in the image of God, we have all right to dismantle the strong man over Guyana. Because what is in us can bring down the strong man. Drugs enter into Guyana. Mafia mean the hand of darkness. We are quite aware that the former president, according to what has been said, that he was involved or is involved or will ever be involved in drugs. A head of state, the end of darkness over a nation, we have the authority. We must mount it. I remember that there was a man, a preacher. Before he go out and preach, there was a little woman, an intercessor, who ran before him to take charge of that country so that they can be success, so that they can be pulling down. So that there can be a setting up of righteous principle and righteous government and righteous people in that very community. She went there and she made the sacrifices. We have got it. We have it. We have it. We have it. The word of God must go before. There is no distance with words. You send it out of your mouth. It will go in all to the world to create havoc, to pull down the works of darkness and so that the works of God can be established. That's why the word of God said, every tongue that rises against you, you must condemn it. You must open your mouth and condemn it. You must come to punch. You must come to punch. It is very important for you to counter punch. If you don't counter punch, it will affect you. Say so every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we must rise up, open our mouth, and condemn it. Pull it down. It must be pulled down. We build by the words of our mouth. And we destroy by the words of our mouth. We dismantle by the words of our mouth. Brethren, if we have everything that it takes to build, we must build based upon the word of God. Because the word of God is forever settled in heaven. And as long as you and I can say what the word said, the word will be established. And God will have no other alternative but to stand upon His Word, to enforce His Word. I remember I was in Antigua. Early morning, we were doing deliverance. I served the pastor, the assistant pastor, and there was another brother 
And we were there casting out demons. And they were kind of stubborn. But what of the minister said, Lord, we call for fighter angels. The place was still. There was no wind there. Under that tent, one side of the tent, they were marching upon that tent. And when that was happening, we didn't ask, we didn't have to ask the demons to go. They start to go. Because we get, but we call for backup and backup came. said the angels are our ministering servants many of them they are there they are not increasing in strength the angel of the Lord increase in strength when we give them work to do they that are with us are more than they that are against us. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. If I am wounded, I am more deadly than ever. No surrender. No retreat. As of tonight, we must not give up any other mountain. Not a blade of grass. Not one cross. Not one blue sake, and one Christian soldier marching on to war, just to march into Jericho, and just to conquer Jericho. There is still land to be conquered. Angels are to our disposal. Let us call them in. Oh my God. Let us call them in. Oh my God! In any ministry, there are always two angels. One for you and one for the ministry. They will always be present. Because no weapon formed against you should never prosper. My God! Angels are ready waiting to war for us my God mouth it 